so I'm on my way to the auto parts store to get a rear sway bar link bushings. So on the XJ sway bar that I used, um, of course I bought it used, the links, everything was used and the links were rusty. So at the off-road park, um, at some point in the day, apparently the one rear sway bar link broke, um, ejected its bushing, and uh, so I got no rear sway bar right now, and it's, you know, it helps. So I ordered some new rear sway bar links, but they didn't come with the bushing that slips on the end of the sway bar. So I'm on my way to get those. Also gonna wash the truck um, and doing a little test drive. So uh, after the flop, my brake pedal had been kind of mushy, and uh, my only guess was that maybe air was introduced into the master cylinder uh, when it flopped up on its side, um, and I was I had to push the brakes and hold the brakes down when they flopped me back over, um, so I didn't roll down the hill into that the other truck that was there. So um, had Whitney help me rebleed the brakes and. Uh, seems to have helped. I got a pedal again, so that's good. Um, hopefully that continues to be the trend because brakes are good. But uh, yeah, anyway, we're going to get this thing cleaned up a little bit. Uh, I have been invited multiple times to a rigs and coffee event that happens in Hudsonville, Michigan, uh, which is a, a little ways away from me, but we're going to uh, try and get this thing cleaned up and uh, maybe head down there and visit with everybody and check it out see what it's all about tomorrow so so this is what I went to get is this bushing I had the links however the links didn't come with that bushing that one it did but not that one for whatever reason because mine is broken so um, we're gonna swap those out it's pretty simple uh, the bolt that I use in the bottom is a factory Jeep bolt it's a 18 millimeter heads both sides and then um, yeah, the other just slides on the end of the sway bar and clamps down tight. So it'll be quick and easy. And uh, yeah, we'll just give it a, another little look over, check fluids, all that stuff before we uh, get ready to make our way south in the morning. So we're on our way to Hudsonville for this rigs and coffee meet. And we keep getting this weird vibration-y feeling in the drivetrain. And it, like you'll hit a bump and you get it and then it goes away for a while and so we uh we pulled over we're in big rapids actually uh exit 139 had like a carpool lot so we're just gonna look it over quick see what so up. what we found is when you're jumping up and down in the back bumper of the truck the rear drive shaft is supposed to like slip inside of itself and it's not doing that it's like moving the flange at the rear output of the t-case which is scary it also um, makes the uh, pinion deflect down then also yeah. which is probably making the drive shaft whip yeah yeah so that isn't good so i think we're gonna try and go over here maybe to uh myers or something we'll uh, unbolt the drive shaft see if we can get it to free up and move and then uh I don't know if we can't. Maybe we at least we're somewhere where we can get something to uh, grease it. So, yeah. Hopefully, we make it to Riggs and Coffee. We'll see how this goes. All right. So, we got to dig out our 14 millimeter stuff. We'll get this drive shaft pulled out of here, see what we can do with it. All right. So, crazy enough, we unbolted the drive shaft thinking that we were going to have to do something serious. And as I was trying to pull it apart, it like broke free and started moving nice and easy. And so we took it all the way out and checked it. Everything moves free. I don't know what the heck's going on. If it was just stuck a little bit. Makes zero sense. Cause you can like two hands, pull it apart, put it together nice and easy. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. But you could definitely tell before we did that, it was like pushing against the transfer case. The flange on the back of the transfer case was actually like moving in and out a little bit. You could see it pushing on the seal and now you can't. So don't know don't know all i know is we still got quite a ways to go so we're getting back on the road
So we're here at the Rigs and Coffee event and there is a lot of cool stuff, including another solid axle swap little truck from the school Bronco, uh, old school Bronco 44 axle and nine inch rear. This four liter Ranger is pretty cool, but all kinds of makes and models, Subarus, Broncos, Jeeps, Land Rovers, you name it. There's a lot of really cool stuff here. That right there, I could I could definitely do that. Two door Bronco, that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. This two door Rover, that's pretty nuts. I like it. A little CJ wheelbase. That is a super neat little buggy. I've seen one before, but oh yeah. No, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All different kinds of stuff. All different kinds of camping setups. Truck camper to just sleep on platforms and SUVs. Here it comes. Standard cab short bed. I gotta go drool on this one. Tracks and all bags, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty crazy. Some of these guys they drove over from Wisconsin. getting to the like, raffle portion of it where they're giving away some stuff so somebody's coming here and lining up walking up here but yeah it's pretty cool a lot of cool rigs not a lot of sweet people it's been a great day all right so it was a super good time met a lot of really nice people seen some pretty sweet builds but anyway we got stop for a second Joe wanted a picture of the Tacoma next to a Sequoia but that was a pretty cool event met a lot of nice people a lot of super sweet rigs and uh yeah it's a good time hanging out checking people's builds out now we got to make the trek back north unless we find something to do to maybe occupy a little time while we're down in the Grand Rapids area I guess if you're going to be this far away from home you might as well Make a pit stop at the old hobby shop. See if there's anything cool that you, you know, can't live without. So the big purchase, little hexes to bolt the wheels to the trucks. Six bucks. Got out of there cheap today. <laughs> now, I think we're gonna make our way back north. Although, there's a Land Rover dealer down the road and I kinda wanna take a pit stop in there quick I'm super curious to see how much some little two-door rovers are. And they had one on the lot. So, not that I don't think I would ever buy a Land Rover, but it's pretty cool looking, and I'm nosy. All right, so I gotta know. It's super cool looking. Like, this thing is rad looking. $63,000. Two liter turbocharged four cylinder. I mean, it's fairly equivalent to like the new Broncos or whatnot, I guess. 
I mean, the Broncos, you can buy a pretty stripped down version for a, a lot less than that. It's cool looking. It's really cool looking. I don't know if it's $63,000 cool. I'm just about to leave and let Chris drive for a little while. That's kind of cool. That's real neat. Just filling up the old girl for the ride home. We'll have to do a mile per gallon check. So we were pushing it pretty hard coming down, especially after our little hiccup there. I'm sure we were eating the fuel like crazy. All right, so what is it? 172.5. 172.5, and we burned up 15.35. It's not very good. No. So we got a whopping 11.2 miles to the gallon. Ouch. Anyway, headed back north. And we're back. Another 314 miles on the old girl today. She took it like a champ.